Ngara to ngurungo na we akon di palpan jeng wal pokorupan ka mela ka na merong ni tual yara ta guru to ka ringgit malang ngora marci lemurong na kolong kain gurung lemurong wali jama rabangi pa pro ba pro ba pro yo to yin di mari kotara wako yapa yo so would like to Say bookmark. Good morning to all, and the clans that we surround here within East Arnhem Land, through clans, different clans connected, and as you to Indi Marigotara Wakoyapa clan nation. Welcome to Yolngo country. Welcome to our home where our ancestors and our law rest on this land. In the space of my Mulka electorate. Welcome Prime Minister and members of parliament. Thank you for coming and thank you to the elders and organizers here. Over my lifetime, I have seen our two worlds meet. I was part of a, a generation of children that saw Yolngo and Balanda coming together. Right now, my life is a senior elder, Yolngo leader, and a member of the Northern Territory Parliament is about trying to create harmony between two worlds and two cultures. So far in our history, the outcome of these two worlds coming together has not been harmonious. It is often been violent and continues to be violent the high rates of poverty, incarceration, overcrowding, unemployment, suicide, family violence, community violence, school refusal, early deaths, and deaths from preventative diseases shows that our communities are in state of crisis that is about survival. The survival of our culture and people and the fight to be Yolngo is happening each and every day in our communities. It is the reason why I have been elected twice as an independent member, as a voice of Yolngo people. Our people are speaking strong when they vote for me. Why? Because I stand for treaty and Yolngo Rom Ngorongo. Our way first. We are fighting for our sovereignty to be recognized and respected so that we can create two way systems and institutions that bring a better way of life for our people so that we can move out of crisis and survival towards future that is welcoming for Yolngo people and culture. The future that gives space and acceptance to our way of life without the constant push and pressure to assimilation, a future that brings Yolngo self-determination and self-governance. I was born on my father's country at Marapai in Bakangambai. The first 10 years of my life was a traditional, was a traditional life and very little outside influence. 
I can remember Bapa Shepi's plane flying in to collect crocodile skins for trade and throwing out barley sugar sweets to kids during Christmas and New Year's days. And I remember removing and I remember moving to high ground in the wet, wet season and then deep into the heart of the Arapura swamp in the dry season. We moved all around the country, moving with the seasons that changes to different places, knowing that the land that would care, care for us all year around we walked for miles and miles, and that was how it was done then. I was educated in my, by my elders and by my kin. It is an education in many, which many adults had the responsibility of teaching me about my language caring for country and kin, about law, about your knowledges, and about self-discipline. Our education is a lifelong journey that produces leaders with deep knowledge, similar to a high-level university study, and with the authority of, the, of a high court judge. However, at the age of 10, my family decided to, that I could go to school on Elko Island. And this was the beginning of my journey to understand two worlds and two ways. As an adult, I became to learn about aircraft maintenance engineering through the Mission Aviation Fellowship, MAF, and I studied to become a pilot in Ballarat, Victoria. During that time, I was learning about the Ballander world. I was learning about the culture, the language, how to be polite, the customs, and the law, but I was a long way away from country and my culture. And my own education from my young leaders and elders was missing. And as I walked in two worlds, I felt like a, a dog with two masters, and these masters were walking in different directions, one this way and one this way. And I was always away from home and others, becoming exhausted and confused from running between, between them. And in the end, I had to choose, to choose to return to my country and people to gain knowledge, and I needed to become who I am. Who I, who I am now. And this is the problem for our future generations because they need to have opportunity in both worlds. Instead of two pathways going in different directions, we need, to, we need two paths that are going side by side. So, closely that they can work, work on and at the same time. But it is not the Yolngo who need to move across to the closing gap and close the gap. It is the Balanda system and institutions that do not recognize our sovereignty. 
that do not allow for another worldview or perspective that must move. Institutions that are transplanted straight from the urban towns and push upon us, such as the mainstream Western school systems or Balanda policing and justice system or the CDP programs that push for a system of work and employment that is not about community-minded care or yolongo prosperity. The institutions have stripped yolongo of our rightful place as educators and peacekeepers, and as peacekeepers and as leaders. It has undermined our governance processes and deprived us of our rightful kin place as leaders of our people. As we come to the end of the intervention and the end of the stronger futures, we have barely, we have barely survived another wave of colonization. But many people have asked the question, what would I like, like to see now? I have said that we need to feel the rollback of the intervention. We need to feel it the same way we felt the intervention push over the top of us, suffocating us. We now need to, see, need to feel the pressure being removed rather than a silence of um, policy lapsing we need to see a better day. This would, this would feel like the beginning of that treaty negotiations. In my mind, the opposite, opposite to the intervention is treaty. The, treat, the intervention was shameful. It was a systematic rehumanization, dehumanizations rather, of all people and Aboriginal people that took our rights away. And the end of the era must be about the assertion of our sovereignty through diplomatic conversations between the federal government and those First Nations that want to create treaty agreements. The discussion is about, the discussion about the statement of the heart is a very important one. Voice, treaty, and truth are about First Nations people reclaiming our story so we can build our future. The constitution of this country has been wrong from the very beginning because it never came under the power of the treaty. It is a foreign institution on stolen land and it was never be, never be, it will never be legitimate without agreement of the First Nations people. Ideally, an amendment to the con Constitution should recognize all three elements of the statement. The voice, treaty, and truth should be in enshrined and protected together so that the Australians can can be proud of who we are. I have been elected by the 
people of this land, I have been elected twice on this platform of treaty. And before I die, I want to be part of the federal treaty process. We are here in my electorate, electorate that I name Molka. If I can take time, Molka space is a, a space like this, sitting down, where we sit down together as delegates. We, we gather as delegates, and we are delegated members from from everywhere that we talk about issues and trying to solve issues as diplomatics. That is the ground of Mulka space. That's what Mulka, Mulka space means. So that's all about the word Mulka, like I've already des <laughs> described. This is the truth truth-telling space where you don't hide anything. And Garma is a mulka space for telling the truth. You don't stand in, in a court or in the Yolmo, Yolmo ceremonial space and tell lies because lies are not part of Yolmo Rome. Paingo. It is not, it is not our law. Yeah, yeah, lies is not our law. We have been promised treaty in the past, but as the young, as a youth in the band sang, like writing in the sand. That promise disappeared. But this is this time we hear the commitment of this prime minister and the government. And I want to ensure that there is urgency to work towards voice, treaty, and truth at the same time, not only before the other. Sorry, say that again. Not, not one another, not one before the other. We have been waiting for a long time for treaty to come. Our generous spirits, our trust, and our hospitality have been abused, and our elders who began this call for treaty have passed away. I respectfully call on the Prime Minister and the Minister for Indigenous Australians to be, begin the process of treaty making alongside the establishment of our of the voice and the truth telling without delay i would not be doing my job of bringing harmony to our cultures if i didn't call strongly for this today thank you all